Look at shares of Signet Jewelers surging today up nearly 20 percent at the moment. On the back of Q3 results that beat on the top and bottom lines, especially the bottom line, the jewelry retailer also updating its full year revenue guidance. Joining me here exclusively at Post 9 is Signet CEO Jenna Drosos. It's good to see you. Great to see in you, person, Sarah. For a change. I know, in person. Where did, the, where did the big surprise here come from? You know, I think uh, consumers were stronger than we really expected in the quarter. It was a broad-based beat. We beat on the core business on the top line. We beat on our pure place, including Blue Nile on the top line. And actually, the bottom line, as you mentioned, was strong enough to offset the losses on Blue Nile. Yeah, so this is very strong. Three times what, what some of the analysts there were exactly. expecting. There, were, there was also the strength, the consumer strength came from the higher income level. Exactly. So have you pivoted or are people trading down? What, what's happening there? You know, we, we have 11 banners in our portfolio now. We've worked very hard to widen our playing field. Uh, so we used to have all the banners on top of each other. If Kay ran a promotion, Zales declined. Now we've teased those apart. Uh, we're targeting different consumer journeys, different attitudes, and different price points. Uh, and our inventory is very healthy. It's the healthiest it's been in recent history. And so we've been able to pivot our assortment very quickly, use our data to target higher income customers. And as we anticipated that lower income customers would be more challenged, we pivoted our assortment and our marketing into the higher end. So is there any indication that the higher end is slowing down. What are you seeing for holiday? We've seen a strong consumer so far. Um, you know, I hear the same news as you about potential recession, but uh, at this point, you know, I think let's let the economists uh, determine that. We're, we're prepared for a strong holiday season. Do you think there's a shift in attitude around buying jewelry post-pandemic? There has definitely been um, actually a very endearing shift. Uh, people are giving fewer gifts, but at higher price points because they're giving to people that they care more about. So gifts of love more so. And that's been very good for the jewelry business. There's also been a wedding boom. Is that still happening or is that tailed off a bit? You know, it's been a, an interesting cycle. If you look at, you know, over the last 40 years, engagements and weddings are very steady, up, both up about 2% every year. But COVID caused a bit of a short-term blips. So we didn't see weddings. Then all of a sudden we saw record weddings this year. We saw engagement slow down a little bit, then spike up. We've seen them slow down actually a little bit this year. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, two years from now, it's completely back to normalized levels. So 2023, fewer weddings than 2022. Yeah, is yeah but still high. Uh, and engagement's a little bit lower. So, yeah. so, so you mentioned the inventories that are low. That also separates you from the rest of retailers. Is it just because you didn't have the supply chain issues? No, no. We've been very diligent in bringing down our inventories. That's been great for us. We've invested uh, $900 million in acquisitions, $700 million in digital data and store refresh, and given back $1.3 billion to shareholders over the last number of years. So our cash position has been a big advantage, partially driven by healthy inventory. Our inventory was down 2% in the quarter. Uh, we have flexible fulfillment across our fleet, so our jewelry consultants and customers can access jewelry from anywhere in the country, any one of our banners. Do, so do, are great. there any problems with supply in the industry? We haven't. A little bit on packaging, uh, but, but nothing in terms of delivering jewelry. We have 30% newness and our stores are well stocked. What about the pricing environment? We keep hearing retail is more promotional and what drove Black Friday and Cyber Monday were promotions. Are you seeing that? No, our margins were actually very strong over Black Friday weekend. It was a more promotional time, but we've been able to value engineer products in a way that give great value to customers at all price points. We're highly vertically integrated, so we have an ability to really flex in times like this to make sure that customers are getting great value. So uh, we haven't seen that kind of pressure. But you have increased prices over... And then we, have, period, we have right? increased prices somewhat. We've mostly tiered up our inventory, though, to higher price point product, which is offering a great value to customers. And finally, a question I know investors are paying attention to and have watched since the acquisition of Blue Nile. What are you telling them about profitability in Blue Nile, how dilutive it's going to be for how long? So Blue Nile was not profitable in the third quarter. We anticipated that and more than offset it with our core banners. It won't be profitable again in the fourth quarter. That presents an opportunity, obviously, over time. But it is the strongest brand name in online bridal retail. We think there's a lot we can do with it. And so far, uh, we're very pleased with the talent in the organization and with the synergies that we're seeing. A lot of opportunity in the back office.
Jenna, thank you so much. Thank Good you, to see Sarah. You. Good yeah. to see you. Jenna Drosos is the CEO of Signet, which shares on a roll today.